Hey, housewives, come on in. You know the dirty dishes are still in the sink from yesterday and the laundry is still in the basket. Pop your AirPods in and make yourself at home here. I'm Tracy. I'm Tori. And And we we are your Unlikely Housewives. Stepping out in faith and believing that God calls the unlikely, we are here to show you the appreciation and validation you deserve, lead you to authentic relationships, and release you of believing the cultural lies to restore your faith and wellness. Pull up those high-waisted yoga pants, tighten your top knot, and reheat your coffee for the third time. Turn up the volume and let's go. Housewives, happy to be back here again with you. And we have got guests with us in studio and afar. And we're excited to have our guests back with us today. If you have not heard the Twin Fitness first episode on our hormones and just aging bodies. Oh, it's so good. Go back and listen to it. It'll be just a few episodes previous to this, but we're going to focus on something else. But before we jump into that, I want to give just a brief intro again of Michelle and Christy. They are sisters. They're twin sisters, both girl mamas. They graduated. Is there a way to be a twin without being a sister? You just kept saying that. that. Yeah, you just kept, they're twin sisters. I'm sorry, I had to. But no one's ever introduced you like that. Yeah. So uh now this is special. It's just Uh special uh introduction. (laughs) We're one of a (laughs) good thing. They both graduated uh, with Bachelor of Science degrees in exercise science and nutrition from K-State. Um, They've continued on with nutrition classes and hormone classes and all the things. They are personal trainers. Um, They used to be former fitness bikini pros, which are amazing because they have really gone from that through learning new systems and willpower knowledge about the human body to become this mamas who face all the things and encourage other women and have just created their own business through this. And so go back and listen, like I said, to the women's and hormones episode if you haven't already. But for this episode, we are going to talk about teens, girls specifically, and hormones and how we can keep our girls healthy. So welcome. Yes. <laughs> okay. So Christy and I both have daughters, like like she said, um, and mine is in high school. Christy's is in middle school. So we're kind of in that teen era. And so we want to help. That, thank you for the Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> I had to, um, I'm in my teen mom era. <laughs> Although that does sound like that. That's that, like that, 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 no, <laughs> no, my MTV teen mom era. No, 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 no. no, no. Sorry. Oh, gosh. gosh okay. Too so. funny. So we want to provide some information and provide education to other moms out there that are approaching the teen years with their kids, whether it's a male or female, you can use it both ways. So we're here to help you help them with their energy, how to stay fit, how to be more confident. You know, as a female, you kind of have to think of all those things, right? So probably the number one thing we want to portray is, and if you listen to our first um, podcast with these guys We talked about being a B student, not an A plus student. So that's probably the number one thing. And you have to lead by example. Moms and dads out there, lead by example. They will follow your lead. Trust me. As I've gotten older and I've had my kids have gotten older, I'm like, wow, I think they just said those words right on my mouth. Like, it's just Mm -hmm. crazy, right? How they start mimicking your everything. Oh, I can hear them. I'm 30. Something. And I can hear myself these days and I go, oh, my God, I sounded like my mother. Mm-hmm. Yes, and mom, yes. I meant that in the biggest compliment. Yes, <laughs> no, um, so I just wanted you to know that. Right. So let's dive into things that we feel like that has helped our kids that we do. And one of the big things is when you're we're talking, going to talk about nutrition, because I feel like that that's kind of the biggest mystery and misconception out there. There's way too much wrong information when it comes to nutrition in kids. First off, don't eliminate any specific food group from a child. That's a no. Second off, fix one thing like your evening meals. Don't fix five things and you eat the that thing and the, ever, the rest of the family has to all is eating something separate. So that helps you kind of make it so that it's not so overwhelming as a mom when you're cooking and prepping. And if they see you eating. So, so example, if you're on this special diet and you're you, all you can get is a bowl of lettuce, what do you think your kids are doing? They're analyzing that. Well, why are you only eating a bowl of lettuce? Is that what I need to do is eat a bowl of lettuce? So you don't want to portray that. 
So when it comes to eating healthy, cook healthy, and your kids will follow that that lead. Okay. Chrissy, I don't know. Chrissy does a lot of, she's got a lot of like good tips. She was giving me tips the other day with what to fix. I don't know. She had a stir fry. I live in the middle of nowhere, literally um, on a 30 acre ranch farm. So I cook all the time because I have to cook because we don't have options. We can't run to town or run to even a grocery store. It's it, uh, somewhat close. So I think cooking is super important. I want to back up a little bit and I want to go over like what we've seen through our, our world and what. I feel like our teens and our daughters and our kids' generation is going to see more of. And it's a bit alarming to me, and I don't want to scare anyone, but I kind of want to scare people because I'm not sure what else to do, to be quite honest. So through the years, like back in our day, the older individuals that we have on here, aka not Tori, let's talk about teen girls and pre period. Um, Let's just throw it out there, honestly. Like, so back in my day, when I was in middle school and things like that, I didn't have friends having periods in third grade, fourth grade. It didn't happen. Like maybe sixth, seventh, and eighth, right? We hadn't even seen the video yet. It came later. There's there's a video that you see, and then for the, for your own gender, because there's two, then you would watch your video, and then the following year, you'd watch the other gender, because then you're kind of like, oh, okay, but you had to figure out your own stuff first. But that didn't happen until like fifth or sixth grade. Well, I think that's still the case, which they need to like lower it down to third grade. But now what is so mind blowing to me is that these girls are having periods in third grade. And I'm not exactly sure. What is that? Ten? How old are you at third grade? Uh, third, grade is third grade is third grade. She's eight, about to turn nine. I was going to say nine. nine. Yeah. Nine. I know of girls that have had periods that early, you guys. So where where I go with that, I'm like, well, first of all, that poor thing to, to understand what's going on with her body when when that happens at that young age, and then she has to have it for the rest of her life. Prayers for her, like like I just I hate to see it because I feel like they're so young, they don't understand it, right? They're still figuring out who to play with on the playground. They're like a playground. There should not be a playground if you have your period. <laughs> I'm just saying that's not <laughs> that's that's true. true. That is a good statement. The <laughs> playground if you have a period. Yes. I think the one reason why we're seeing this trend, and here's here's like a tad bit of a a stat for you. So doctors out there and research shows there's a hundred pound mark. So if you think about that, if your daughter is a hundred pounds, chances are they're probably going to start their period sometime soon. Okay. And I'm not saying that it has to be a hundred pounds. They may be 95. They may be 115. But it's around that hundred mark because here's what happens is we like we said, body fat feeds hormones. If you like the last podcast, we just talked discussed this. Teens are the same way. We are seeing a substantial amount of body fat on teens these days. I mean, honestly, if you look at next time you take your kids to school, just observe the amount of weight as Americans as we we carry young, very young. And it's disturbing in the way of like it becomes a health issue at some point. Not a visual, like I, I'm not. I'm not trying to preach like modelist people here. I'm just talking like health guys, and so that's one reason why we've seen periods start so much younger in girls and hormones and men and boys because of the extra body fat they're all carrying. Right. Yeah, the extra body fat, like Chrissy said, it feeds hormones. I think I don't know what you were getting ready to say, Chrissy. I think I just interrupted you. But one of the biggest culprits, in my opinion, is the amount of sugar kids yeah. consume. We just saw in our last podcast talked about th- there's a latte, pumpkin spice, whatever that has 185 grams of sugar. I'll put a million dollars out there, honestly. Like 90% of kids consume because you- you're not around them. Even if you're the mom out there going, well, my kid would never do that. I watch his nutrition. And if you're that mom out there, I guarantee you, your kid at school is consuming way more that would blow your mind that you have no idea. Yep. Oh, absolutely. And schools aren't helping on it because, Uh too, they're offering what's the fundraiser selling candy bars? What at lunch? What are they doing? You know, like, oh, you can get a soda here for 50 cents or the ice cream on Friday. It's 50 cents anymore. Oh, Oh, this this is true. (laughs) Did I just, ah, I dated myself. So, yes, the amount of sugar people are consuming and Mm -hmm. throwing their hormones. And I've heard moms say this. Oh, well, they're fine. They're active. They'll run it off. Uh, No, they won't. Eventually, it will catch up with them. It may be two, three, four years down the road, but it will catch up with them at some point. And they will they can't have that shift. There's also a huge spike in type two diabetes, guys. And it's all Christy and I've had a doctor tell us type two diabetes is 100 percent 
controlled. You can control whether you get type 2 diabetes, type 1, no, but type 2, yes. Yeah. You're seeing more and more kids coming in with type 2 diabetes. And I'm talking young kids. And that that is, from a from a health perspective, very disturbing to me. Like, so this this all comes back around to hormones. Again, body fat's feeding hormones. And that's why we see all these girls having hormones and then or having periods young. And then they have these really bad periods because they are carrying extra body fat. Your periods will be worse. So if you have a teenage daughter that can't even go to school, now there might be some other things going on. So I'm not going to claim that. But I would start diving into their fitness and their eating first. And then you can kind of tackle some other problems that they may be having. OK, so can I ask a question? Because yeah. I obviously I'm, I'm in this as well. And I've had this conversation with many moms and their teen daughters. You know, the number one thing that, you know, everybody is afraid of is making it too much of a concern to where you're creating a body image issue for your daughter or a, a worry about what she's eating. So then she stops eating and now we're dealing with eating disorders. You know, I mean, it is very, very touchy. And so. Obviously, one of my friends is absolutely encouraged me. And she always says, she's like, when you're talking about food, she's like, you don't have to talk about good food and bad food. And you don't have to talk about how bad sugar is because there is good sugar. You need to talk about what fuels your body and what depletes your body, basically. Just talk about it from a it's it's food is food and there's natural food and there's packaged food and just educate from a, you know, non-emotionally tied aspect to it. And she's like, you teach them how to talk. You teach them how to walk. You teach them all the other things. You can teach your kids about food without making them feel bad. Uh, 100%. So I have two dancers. Mm -hmm. My daughters are dancers. So I'm very, very careful because dancers, oh, yeah. body image, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Things that I highly recommend. I never use the word diet. Mm -hmm. I never use the word skinny. I never use the word I have to go work out because I feel fat as moms out there. If you're using these words around your kids, please stop because they take those words to the next level. Oh, my gosh, I feel like I'm, I'm fat around my midsection. I need to go work out or I can't eat that because I'm fat. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to lose Sally. I'm trying to lose 10 pounds. So I'm I'm mommy's fat. So she's going to no stop. Like mm -hmm. that is the body image. Again, lead by example. So I my sister Christy and I are very, very careful what kind of verbiage we use with our children. And to your point, Tracy, you don't have to label good food, bad food. If my kids, I think Christy does the same thing. It's about education. Mm -hmm. Like if you want more energy, if you want to perform at your next game or you want to run your, your daughter runs cross country, if you want to have a great run today, these are things that are going to fuel your body and make you feel better. Mm -hmm. These things are not going to fuel your body and make you feel better. If you want to perform and have a good test, if you're taking a test or whatever it is, there's thing, words you can use to make it so that it's all healthy. But yet again, lead by example, the words that come out of your mouth don't put yourself down. If you put yourself down, they're going to, oh, that's what I have to do. To, like it, yeah. it literally, it instantly goes in their head. So I'm very careful as to what I say. I'm, I'm going to go work out because I want, I want to be healthier and stronger. Like I want to go work out. I'm going to, I, I want to eat this because it gives me good energy. Hmm. Not that, oh, I can't have that or I can't have this. So again, that's kind of the, but that is a very true, you don't want to go down the wrong path, right? 100% because they're very touchy. Yeah. yeah, depends on the day. Chris and yeah. I have an inside joke, to inside joke that we'll say something and it's like, well, duh, mom. Or you think, you know, like that's the thing that they do. Like, duh, they look at you like, why are you saying that to me? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of attitude that you get, you know, back with when it comes to teenage kiddos. So, yes, that's a very true. I don't know if that answered your question, yeah. but yeah, just be careful when it comes to that. Hey, housewives, we are so excited. Oh my goodness, this is a dream come true. Y'all have heard us talk about our sauna sessions from the beginning, and we have Sun Lighten as a sponsor of Unlikely Housewives. Why wouldn't we have a sauna session that brings all of the good juices flowing right out of our bodies when we're detoxing. Eggs. Bring it right to the unlikely housewives. Exactly. But first of all, some of those benefits. The intention of getting in the sauna for us was not to create a podcast. No. Nope. Mm -mm. I have another we just job. We wanted to sweat. We detox. Wa detox. We wanted to boost our immunity. We wanted the reducing of inflammation and some the weight puff. loss. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's anti-aging. 
I mean, there's so many benefits to infrared sauna sessions. And so that was our initial purpose. Yeah. And just to vent, it was that season of life that we just needed to sit and talk and talk about what was going on. And that's where it all happened was in the sauna. Did you realize that there are studies that show heat therapy produces endorphins, those feel good emotions? So we were boosting our mood and ideas. So far, we boosted so far that a podcast idea came just flowing out. You guys... This is an incredible opportunity for you. You can have up to $600 off using our link, which is get.sunlighten.com backslash unlikely. That's get.sunlighten.com backslash unlikely. We'll put that link in the show notes for you too. But $600 off a Sunlighten purchase The one that I have got is the Impulse 3-in-1 Believe, and it's amazing, y'all. It has been the best health investment for our family. I'll say my friends because I invite them over. That's how I use the saunas in your... I I know. I come over and sweat. But it's so good and such a benefit. And And you said family investment. The kids can get in it, too. Exactly. The second I hear that there is a stomach bug going around class, Get in the sunlight and girls like you're going to do this in 20 minutes. Let's make sure your immune system is up to par to not bring that home for anybody. It is a family investment and you will not regret it. Again, that link for us is get.sunlighten.com backslash unlikely. All the link will be in the show notes. Okay, when it comes to making sure our kids are eating well, what, I mean, at their age, all right, let's do nine to high school, okay? Like, these are the ages, right? How much protein should they be getting a day? Like, because let's assume that they're playing sports, they're in activities and things like that or whatever, but like, how much protein? Because I know as women, a lot of times we don't get enough protein. No. And so, like, I know it's like, eat your fruits and veggies. Yeah, but also have a steak, you know, like. Well, and I, I think, too, like the whole thing at school, and this is hard part for us, you know, in feeding four kids and being prepared and having stuff ahead of time, mm-hmm. you know, and there's so many allergies in schools that you can't so much has like peanut butter or nuts or things. And my mm-hmm. son complained about it this morning. He walked into the pantry to grab something to head out the door to school. And he's like, I can't even eat this at school. You know, like he just there's certain things that we don't have on hand. We need to have more on hand that can feed them with all the right things. Yet it's safe at school. So there's it's just kind of a constant battle in my world. Yes, it's a constant battle. So when it comes to teens, like you said, ranging from ninth grade to high school, you want to make sure like if my kids are sitting down to eat, I'm like, where's your protein? Where's your fat? Like I Mm -hmm. asked them, I'm like, you have nothing but carbs on your plate. Go get a protein. So I say a protein with every meal. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, if we can at least shoot for that, we're winning. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's not going to pick you with the protein. Like my girls will say the same thing, but like, well, my blueberries have protein. And I'm like, no, they don't. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, we say protein. Yeah, they're like, okay, well, this is protein. Cereal has protein in it. I'm like, from the milk you have on it, maybe. I'm like, think again. So I'm like, what about an egg? I'm like, there you go, bingo. So I try to like, I try to like, like let them think through it. But but it's funny because even the all the education I've done, sometimes I'm just like, what have I taught you, child? Like, I, you guys have to know this information. Like, so, you know, they have to be reminded. But I definitely would think that you have to like ask them those questions. Something else that I do that I think is super important is I tell the girls like, mom, can I go get cereal? I'm like, sure, you can have cereal. It has to be under 10 grams or or less. Go for it. And they go run down the cereal aisle and they come back and they're like, well, nothing is that like, I can't find anything. I'm like, I know. Something else that I've also done was I take my kids to the grocery store. This I can't. I think I read something somewhere that if your children pick it out. They will eat 90% more of a chance that they will eat it versus you going to the grocery store and getting it. So take it. That person has not gone to Sam's or Costco with me on a sample day (laughs) and where my kids have tried absolutely everything. And they're like, I'm going to eat this every single day after school. 
And then you bring it home because it's in a big box. And you're like, right. sweet, this will be great. I'll have their afternoon snack. And they're like, I don't like it. I don't like that. This is not it. So. And then you have daddy disposal eat it. What? Daddy disposal chew yeah. 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 right? Well, you know, that, that's happened too. But yeah, I'm sure that, sure, I'm sure she's right. <laughs> I'm sure, sure. Well, maybe produce. Try produce. Okay, maybe, maybe produce some good. apples yeah. and like, you know, like take into a story, like I pick out something, like Chrissy said, a cereal, less than 10 grams of sugar, like go find something, like, I don't know, make a game out of it. Okay, could- so fats, fats for kids though. Let's talk about, because I want to know, all right, you're saying protein and fat at each meal, like avocados, all right. What else for kids though that is, you know, that they would like? Well, and you have to like lo- loosen the reins with kids. You can't like hold them down like adults. Um, you can't, you can't not allow them to have a Skittles with their friends. Like you can't. Again, that 80-20 rule, right? But even go like, 75. You might try for the CD student. <laughs> All yeah. right, that's fine. I'll take it. Chances are more active than us adults. That's just in life, right? So I definitely think that, that allowing more freedom for them, but again, making sure that when foods that you can control or meals that you can control, that you are providing healthy things at that point. Because... I know even I'm not a dumb mom. I know that my kids are eating probably things that I'm, I'd be like rolling my eyes at school. Like, what the heck are you doing? Like one of them came out with soda in their hand. We don't buy soda at my house. It's just kind of a fast rule. And I'm like, what the H-E-L-L do soda in your hand for? Like, and so it was funny because she, she sat in the car and she's like, and I'm like, well, what is that? And I'm kind of acting dumb, right? And she was like, it's a Dr. Pepper. I'm like, where'd you get that? And I don't even know where she got it. And she, I go, oh, I was like, well, how many grams of sugar is in that? I mean, I knew. And she goes, I don't know. So she turns her, she's like, oh my gosh, mom, there's 45 grams of sugar in this. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, that doesn't surprise me. She was like, I don't want it anymore. I'm like, okay, dump it out. I didn't tell her, no, you can't have it. Because if I would have said that, she would have drank the whole day. She would have drank the whole day. And then asked for another, <laughs> yeah. give me another bartender. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Cause so I just acted completely dumb. I'm like, oh. I mean, I didn't say we don't allow sugar. Or we don't. Allow, I mean, I didn't go down that path. So again, let them choose, but you're like guiding them, right? Giving them good, secure choices. I, I mean, you know, like not saying, "Hey, which ice cream bar do you want?" Like, "Hey, let's see if we can find a treat." You know, that's like you said. You can buy things in like smaller packs. Like back to your Skittle comment. Like, do the small. Bite sized packs of Skittles. Oh, yeah, the fun, the fun the, size. The fun size. That's what I was looking for. The fun size. Do the ice cream bars that are like the yeah. little mini bars. Like, yep. if you go through what I think, get a mini blizzard or ice cream. Like, yep. you can go smaller mm-hmm. um, if they're. That's what we do because that's all we can afford these days. <laughs> it's family night out a treat. We're like, everybody's getting minis. Damn you, Biden. <laughs> it's it's damn you. Yeah. It's better you've for the bodies you, anyway. <laughs> you've ruined blizzards for our family. Even you've, you've kind of tackled Derek. Okay, so for us. I had another thing that popped up into my head as we're all talking about all of this. So as women in previous episode, kind of referencing some of this that we talked about with nutrition being like basically 90 percent of keeping us obviously healthy and our hormones balanced. When it comes to kids, we're all hoping, and especially our daughters, you know, they are a little bit more active. We can all speak to at least us here. They're all involved in something, right? So that helps. But when it comes to their percentage and ratio, is it a little different between nutrition and exercise and sleep? Okay, so let's let's go on the exercise. You portion. mean the amount of hours that that our children? We could probably talk as long as we're they're supposed to actually sleep. I <laughs> right. that way. Why? Why? Do we have, I don't oh, know. Right, things. and then they get in high school, and it's a whole different story. So when it comes to like exercise, if your kid is active, they say that there's like an activity where like they should do. 30 minutes of activity a day. Think of it this way: our bodies are meant to move. We are not meant to be sedentary. Right. So as kids, moving, jumping, playing, um, running outside, doing things like that and not recess. Stop staring at your phones. Mm-hmm. Get off the phones. Go do something. I, yep. I mean, that honestly. If your kids are in maybe sports or activities or maybe in something that they enjoy that somewhat active, but go on a walk with them. Go on a bike ride with them. Go to the park and let them play. Like You can get involved. If you're more active, your kids are going to, Michelle, like Michelle said, they are going to follow your lead. You are the role model. If you're on the couch watching TV or on your phone, shame on you, honestly. Like Because they are, you are their role model. And I know there's times where you're like, you can't even fathom the thought of getting off the couch and going to do something. Believe me. But others like, you want to play volleyball? Mom? I'm like, no, I really freaking don't want to play volleyball. I'm exhausted. But yes, I will go play volleyball. And it's 105 degrees outside. I don't want to go out there. Like, 
there are so many options now. And we forget, right? Like, you know, coming from Texas too. like, you're right, 110 degrees outside. Nobody wants to be outside. Well, you can get a membership for the trampoline park, you know, Mm -hmm. or the membership for your rec club that the kids can. There's an indoor pool Mm -hmm. or the outdoor pool. I mean, if there's anything that wears your children out, it's swimming, swimming. in the sun. Yeah. Like for the, uh, the yes. Those and they're those. getting vitamin D. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> when it comes I mean, to nutrition, Tracy asked that uh, that question. When it comes to nutrition, I honestly would focus on one thing and it goes back to sugar. Yeah. Kids are that don't don't eliminate carbs from them. Don't eliminate food from them. You don't want to put a no, a big sticker no mm-hmm. on certain things for them. But educate them and educate them what sugar will do for them. They will get headaches. They will have crash in the middle of the day. I guess it's a thing to drink these energy drinks at school for these kids. Oh, That's a whole nother um, maybe talk we can go through. But I mean, just like make sure that you know, like the, the amount of sugar they're consuming is, it can really affect them. And then if they're drinking too much sugar too late in the afternoon... They're not sleeping. Right. So therefore, we get into the whole sleep thing and they're not tired and then they don't go to bed till midnight and then they're up at 6 a.m. and then they they go again and then they it's this vicious circle you get in. So just try to make their bedtimes, you know, like the same time every night, like the, mm-hmm. just the things. Again, if you're if you go to bed early, they are likely to go to bed early. They follow your lead. It's crazy. It's yep. absolutely crazy. It blows my mind how they follow your lead yep. as I've gotten older. Absolutely. I mean, I I have tried to go to bed so much earlier in the last couple of years and Mm -hmm. everybody I'm like, if you want me to lay with you or be with you, we're starting this process a lot earlier so we can have our talk time, our snuggle time and whatever. And I get everybody to bed and I'm in bed by 930. So clearly my kids are in their room at that time, too, you know, and I've been disciplined on that since they were little because I like my sleep. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yes. And I think it's I think it's underrated. I mean, it is one of the best things you can do. And ha- mm. teaching your kid how to sleep well is like and I get it. There are some people I'm one of those people is a heavy sleeper. And so I can wake up in the middle of the night and then pass right back out or but my husband hears a mouse fart and <laughs> he's up for, you know, the next four hours. And I'm like, OK, you got to learn how to teach your kids how to sleep because that is the Best gift that you can give them and sleep through like everything. Yes. Sleep is huge. So uh, focus on the things that you can control. Lead by example. Reduce the amount of sugar. That's the one thing that I would just be conscious about is the sugar. And speak positive when you're speaking about yourself and to them. Like that's one of the number one things that I feel like that I've seen women do. And it doesn't portray a very well to your kids. Like just make sure you're giving them the right information. Yeah. Okay. So talk to us briefly. Obviously, we we hit on some things on good foods to provide for the teens that helps them with energy, that helps them feel satisfied because we're still working on that in my house. (laughs) We're still working on that. We have got a protein shake down, you know, those kinds of things. But it's the on the go when they're in the car and they're headed to practice. It is the bar. It is the goldfish. It is pirate's booty, whatever, you know, not the best choices, but it's what we do. Right. So what does that look like for teens? What else could we do? You got to remember, like what we said, even for women, older women or us, like not teenagers, fat helps you stay satisfied and helps you not crave sugar. So even with your teens and your younger kids, they still need fat in their diets. Like Michelle said, don't remove any food groups from them, but add fat. So like that protein shape, add fat to that protein shape, Um, a scoop of peanut butter or I'll even ask the girls when they're walking out the door, I'm like, you know, grab a bar that has a little bit more fat in it or just different things. Make sure you provide those things for them. Handful of nuts. Trail mixes are really good because they have nuts in them and they have the sweet chocolate in them and they might like them a a little bit better. Like there's things like that you can do to really help you with on the go snacking, not just your goldfish. Your goldfish are fine, but add maybe a piece of string cheese to that. That's some protein and a little bit of fat. Take small steps. Do you have other ideas for protein? And and I say that because my daughter doesn't eat dairy. Like she hasn't since she was little. So there's no cheese. There's no yogurt. My other daughter, it's like cottage cheese, yogurt. She, you right. know, like I know she's getting it. And even my boys. But my one, she just doesn't touch it at all. We make like protein balls. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. done protein yeah. balls with yeah. the... That's a really good snack that we do. Protein can be 
challenging to try to get it in on a consistent. You do like pepperoni, like little pepperoni bites or like your daughter that doesn't like dairy or wants to go dairy free or maybe is dairy free. Um, you can do even like um, beef sticks of some sort that are all crazy processed. We have a butcher here that has like amazing beef sticks. They're all like supernatural and really, really good. So you can uh, like discover those things. Um, so try to really think outside the box. There's like some vegan cheeses that are awesome. Um, Michelle could probably give you a, a like a referral for, for one of those that they're kind of pricey, but those are really good. Not all of them are good, but the one one we found really good. So there's options out there. You just got to be really creative and think outside the box. And if your kid is only eating, like if they only have like that carbohydrates, maybe just throw in like a fast horse because a lot of fast horses also have protein. There's non-dairy um, yogurts too that are really good. Non-dairy cheeses, not like my, I've gone non-dairy. My daughter's gone non-dairy yeah. and it, it, they're really good. Put little granola in them. That yep. is a super satisfying non-dairy with some granola. Granola mm-hmm. will add like a little bit of the fat to it. It's perfect. Yeah. You can throw flaxseed in it. Like, you you know, you can do those yeah. kind of things as well. That's good. Awesome. Well, I think this gives us a great start of what to do with our kiddos that we at least start asking questions on and go from there. I mean, that's, you know, it's just like you said, it's just one thing at a time and just one thing. It doesn't have to be everything no. and shoot for a C plus student in this in this area. We're going C plus guys, C plus. As our my children are working on long division and spelling words, like oh holy, I, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't have to redo fourth grade. Yeah. Anyways, but we are so thankful for you guys. I know this won't be the last time that we have you guys on there. You guys are a wealth of knowledge, and um, we're just so thankful for you. Where can our listeners find you and support you? You can go to our website, twinfitness.com. We are also on Instagram, um, Twin Fitness KC, on Facebook, anywhere you can get a hold of us. We love to help. If your mom's out there that need some advice and our head spinning, just let us know. We train teens. We do online training for teens. And it's actually very effective because the number one thing I will say is every mom that contacts us, the, the tra- teens that we're training, She's like, I don't want to be the bad person. I'm like, no, let me be that person. We take away that struggle that you might be having with your teenage daughter and let it be us, right? Because they will open up to us and they will explain things to us versus a uh, mom. And, and I think it's really important too that all teens have a positive role model in their lives. And Michelle and I both, I'm a middle school um, basketball coach and Michelle coaches her teens as well. So I love one of my passions is being a positive role model for these girls and making them believe in themselves and where they, they, they don't think that they can do something that they really can if someone just believes in them. So I think that's really, really important that Michelle and I, that's something that we want to empower young teenagers to believe in themselves no matter what they do. Right. Absolutely. It takes one person to make that change for them. Right. Like, yeah. It just, it's that one person, it's that person, their, your aunt or a coach mm-hmm. or whatever it is to make that positive and make it just completely flip for them and what they're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. So we love teens. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It's been so good to have you guys here, not once, but twice. And I think as mamas and moms of girls, I think we're going to be able to just apply this to ourselves and to them over and over again. Because <laughs> we so. know it's a journey. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you guys for being here. And thank until next week, much. Housewives. Bye, Housewives. Whether we made you laugh or cry today, we pray you feel appreciated, bolder and braver than yesterday, stronger and more faithful for tomorrow and living in who you were made to be today. Join our online community on Facebook, link in the show notes, and be sure to review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you enjoy listening. Until next time, housewives, we give you permission to walk confidently, free, and to be intentional in your slippers or stilettos.